after 16 hours of attempting, and who knows how much longer spent figuring things out, I've finally done it. I beat Half-Life 2 without moving my mouse. And no, not by using some alternate control method. <clears throat> you know who you are. So how do you do it? How do you pull off something that everybody always thought was impossible? Let's just start from the beginning. There's a lot of strategy that went into this, and I hope you enjoy hearing the full story. But first, way too many of the people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if you're subscribed, unsubscribe. It really hurts my channel. Enjoy the video. Right off the bat, we begin with an advanced strategy called not jumping. Standing on a rotating platform will usually make you rotate with it. The terrain is one such platform, and it does rotate a little. When jumping, the rotating effect is temporarily cancelled. If you jump at the wrong time, you may end up at a bad angle for opening the doors ahead. You need to be looking within 90 degrees of south to open these doors. This is considered okay, but this isn't. After that, everything goes smoothly until we meet Alex. When we get up off the ground, we'll be facing west, but in the next map, we have to hit a switch that's to our east. You'd be forgiven for thinking that there's nothing you can do, but there is a way to change your viewing angle in this very short stretch of time. There is a bug that's so obscure and otherwise useless that I've only seen it used or even mentioned by the speedrunner Imanex who did a no mouse movement speedrun of Portal. What happens is, when you touch a moving door, it may make you spin around with it. Oh, and by the way... Since Imanex didn't apparently give this bug a name, I'm going to call it DOOR BUG. I don't really know how this works, but since we've done that, now we can hit the switch. After that's done, we have to door bug again on this door in order to face east. This is important because in order for Barney to begin his dialogue and eventually give us the crowbar, hey, we have to look at him. We also have to climb up on a wood pallet. Hey Gordon, the Citadel's on full alert. I've never seen it lit up like that. Now we start getting into combat. Fighting without moving your mouse isn't as hard as you might think, but it does require unusual strategies. Originally I wasn't able to attack these enemies, but when I go over to the corner they start to chase me, which allows me to end up getting a better position on them. Our next problem is at this vent. The angle that we come in at makes it impossible to break this vent using your weapons. If you were able to break the crate, this wouldn't be a problem, because you could just trick the cops into breaking the vent for you. Instead, we have to use a well-placed explosive barrel. Now that we're inside the vent, we can slowly nudge the crate out of our way, since we still can't use the crowbar to break it. Eventually, the cops will shoot it until it breaks. In this level, we can do a very simple skip to avoid opening two doors. On the next map, we need to use a speedrun strategy called save deletion. The full explanation is lengthy, but basically we're manipulating saves to get this effect. And now the game acts as if I just loaded into this map which is useful because it just changed my angle. If you don't do this, you'll find that it's impossible to open this door.
the hell? That man hack was, like, invisible. What? The fuck? Now that I'm in the airboat, I can turn without moving my mouse. Not only that, but the angle of the airboat when you exit will be transferred into you. Going into and then coming out of the building to the right without mouse movement is not possible. Instead, we prop the boat up at a specific angle and then shoot this wood structure. Skipping the on foot section of this map is quite easy, so I do it. The airboat gun is easy to use even without mouse movement. On easy, it comes with heavy aim assist. Aim assist won't do much against the helicopter though. Instead, we need to use the environment. Um, yes. Yes. No. To get through Ravenholm, I exit the boat at a specific angle. I'm using a console command so I can see my exact angle. I jump off this building because you have to look at Father Grigori before he begins talking and eventually moves the lift. You might be surprised that I can open this door when earlier I said that I needed to be within 90 degrees of a door to open it. The difference now is that this door has space around it which allows me to back up and get about 25 extra degrees of room. Once we have the shotgun, it's our preferred combat weapon because it's the noob gun. 
because it requires you to be on target for the least amount of time possible. Now that we're in the buggy, everything is easy again because we can turn however we want and we have a very easy to use weapon. Okay, very close. To kill gunships, we have to exit the buggy at a specific angle and then attempt to aim by walking around. Oh my god. Who's next? Where are you going? What? When coming back, it's impossible to open this door from the inside room. We have to go around it. Going that far out was intentional. There's a huge invisible wall in the way to keep you from doing this, but it's not big enough. If you enter this garage and then quickly back out, you can keep the buggy. Nine. Ow. This is interesting. Hey. We leave the buggy at a specific angle in order to fight the gunships at Nova Prospect. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. This doesn't seem right. Ah. Uh... 
instead of having myself be 20 degrees right of west, I accidentally went left. Being 40 degrees off of my intended angle could be disastrous. I would have to find new positions to attack the gunships from on the spot. Okay, we're good. I nearly wasted like 30 minutes or something. Yeah. I try to let antlions do the work as much as possible. Here I group up the antlions before attacking. This is the most effective way to get through some of the harder areas. They're stuck together. Look at them. There's two head crabs there. They're stuck together. Brilliant. Brilliant game. At this point, grenades start becoming weirdly useful.
やThese turret parts are pretty uneventful, so I'll cut out most of this. I block off one entrance with boxes. Soldiers would never intentionally break these boxes unless the game specifically told them to. I take one turret along for the next room. suck. Was, that was two grenades? Here we use a trick called quantum crouching. If you press the crouch button while you're in the process of uncrouching, the game becomes confused. Physically, you're crouching, but AIs will think that you're standing up. NPCs will shoot where your center would be if you were standing up, which causes them to miss all of their shots. 
In this situation, Gordon ends up acting as a distraction while the ally NPCs can shoot the soldiers for free. Hey, there we go. Behind me is a vent cover. We have no choice but to use an explosive to break it. But we want to avoid taking damage because there's an area up ahead which will be very hard. But we can't simply drop the grenade and run. We need to find somewhere good to place the grenade.
Now we do another save delete to change the camera angle. This register prop is important, and we'll be carrying it through the entire level. This trash bin is also important, and we'll be carrying both of these props into the next map. Getting both objects down this path is quite tricky. Multiple times, you have to throw one prop down, hope it lands somewhere safe, and then carry the other one down. On the last jump, you have to drop the register perfectly on the pipe below, then carry the trash bin over. Then go back and grab the register and take it with you. That took way too many attempts. If you think this part looks excruciating, remember that you're seeing it in 400% speed. The tops of these pods are considered platforms. Standing on them will make you rotate just like the train does at the beginning of the game. We'll rotate on them to get at an angle that's good for punting this bin into the area to the right. Hey. Then I grenade jump back to the starting area. It's important that I drop this grenade just before it explodes because that gives me extra upward momentum. Now I rotate to an extremely precise angle and then carry the register over to the area on the right. Now we get the bin upright and then place it next to the level load. This is just a demonstration. When you're doing it for real, you'll be blind. I'm using this debug command to know where I am. 11, 2, 10. Now we have to go and grab the register. Grabbed it. 
guess that should be good. Then jump on the bin and then jump yeah. into the level load. There we go. I chose not to do this next part on stream because it's very annoying and difficult and my tolerance level for this series was getting low. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh my god, this is my chance to finally outshine a 61 sub YouTuber. Sure, go ahead. Here's what you have to do. That entire setup which started at the last save delete. Grenade jump over to the pod while it's moving away from you. And be aware, that's a very small target to hit. Much less ride on for the entire map. Every time the pod changes directions, you're likely to get thrown off. Countering these changes requires you to frequently move around just slightly on the pod, or jump before each change in direction to keep control of your momentum and move in just the right way in the air so that you land on the pod. Crouching won't do you much good because every time you crouch or uncrouch, you'll just lose all of your speed and get thrown off the pod. You'll also lose all of your speed every time you reload a save. Yeah, I don't know how that works. And anytime the pod is moving downward, it just doesn't really let you stick onto it. Oh yeah, and you can't see where you are relative to the pod because you still can't look down because we're doing a no mouse movement challenge here. Right, 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 right. Given all of that, I think you can understand why I didn't want this to drag on longer than 16 hours. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Okay, so yesterday, when I was rotating on these platforms, I was supposed to go to negative 82, but I wasn't thinking and I accidentally went to positive 82. I didn't care enough to do that part again legitimately. I mean, did you really expect me to? I wish I could say this was a pleasant surprise, but it's not a surprise, or, as you will surely agree, very pleasant. Well, I am nothing if not pragmatic. Perfectly blocking like that. Let's... And now for the reason we did all those insane strategies. If we had simply rode the pod and gotten out of it at the intended angle, we never would have been able to hit any of these power supplies. Are you fucking kidding me? That's... I'll take him from here. Don't struggle, it's no use. <laughs> Until you're where he wants you, there's nothing you can do. I'm sorry, Gordon. Yeah, if I could look at you, Mossman, I'd be giving you a very mean look. At this point, jumping on a rotating platform actually becomes useful because it lets us get a perfect angle for shooting the energy balls into the big 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 big
Is it really that time again? No. Fuck you. Alright, thanks for everyone coming out to watch the stream today. That's something. Something, something. Yes, I'm I'm a great YouTuber and I have I have a great outro. Okay, thanks everybody for coming to the stream today. Goodbye.